Hello, everyone. Hi, looks like we're live. Hello, hello. It looks like we're live. We've got some people starting to tune in. I'm so excited. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes and let everyone kind of get settled, get everyone on and watching. I can see some more viewers signing in. Hello, everyone. We're just going to kind of wait maybe about two to three more minutes. Thank you so much for those of you who are here and on time. I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope you guys have your questions ready. If you're not maybe quite sure how to do the questions in the top left-hand corner, there's a blue button called chat. And throughout this, I'll say this again, but you can pop on there and leave us a little question and I'll try to answer them as I go, but definitely leave some good time at the end for questions and answers. Good. We've still got some people coming on. I'm so excited, guys. I'm still going to give us a couple more minutes. Um, so. <laughs> Just a couple more minutes, guys. I still see some people popping on. So thank you for those of you who are here. Hello. I hope everyone is having a great Friday so far. Okay, we've had kind of a, it looks like we're getting everyone on there. So I am going to go ahead and start. My name is Ashley Boucher, and I am so excited you guys are tuned in with me on this Friday, where, wherever you find yourself and what time of day it is. I am a image consultant. And so just to kind of give you a little bit of a brief background of what that looks like is I work with totally normal people on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes when people hear the word image or personal shopping or stylist, they immediately think, oh, that's out of my price range or that's unobtainable or they think celebrity status. And I have worked with all types of clients, but what I've really focused my business on is working with men and women of really all ages, everywhere in their careers, but they really are struggling with the, they're either struggling or they just really don't have the time in their schedules to get dressed in the mornings. And that sounds so simple and it's something that everybody does each and every day, but oftentimes when we open up our closets, there is just so much stuff that's there. There's like an abundance and we're, we are a, we're a society of consuming. And so that's not, that's not unnatural to have more than what we really need. 
But what I've really found as I've worked with my clients over, I started my firm in 2014 and I was with a firm prior to that. So what I found over the last few years is really that we get into these buying habits and we start to shop for ourselves where we feel comfortable or we find something that we like. And so we purchase it multiple times or in multiple patterns and colors, both men and women. This is the same pattern of just that consumer when it comes to clothing. And it puts us in this box of not allowing ourselves to really feel like we are putting our suit of armor on each and every day. And so that is why I titled this webinar suit of armor is because when we get dressed in the morning and when my clients get dressed in the morning, I really want them to open their closets and to feel like anything and everything in their wardrobe will support them for what comes across in their day. So whether they are a at an engineer at a technology firm or if they are a stay-at-home mom that is running to do art masterpiece at the school with the kids i want each of my clients wardrobes to reflect who they are personally and whatever is going to cross come across their itinerary in the day and so I want to kind of guide you guys along a little bit of a wardrobe journey for yourself and give you some just really helpful, just insider tips on kind of how I process when I go into a client's wardrobe and just kind of that, not necessarily the process from start to finish, but really just how you can get yourself into a place of what you should have in your wardrobe and also how you can really build yourself a purposeful wardrobe and what that looks like. And so the first thing that I really encourage you guys to do is to really just carve out some time. It's not the most exciting, glamorous event that you could do in a weekend or activity you could do in a weekend, but just really carve out some time for yourself that you can have, you know, with just your wardrobe and everybody it's going to take different amounts of time because some people i've gone into closets before where we've spent over nine hours cleaning out their closet and that is you know that can be 20 years of things just accumulating and accumulating and so really just kind of sit with yourself you can definitely of course split it up over a couple days but just really just sit with okay what does my day-to-day -day look like? Am I traveling on an airplane? Am I standing up, sitting down, going to meetings all day? Am I a mom who then goes to sporting events after being in a boardroom and giving presentations? And when you just really take the time to acknowledge what you're getting dressed for and you really remind yourself that you're getting dressed for you and you're getting dressed for your agenda it really puts yourself into a place of a, like um not comparing yourself to others so many times people ask me they're like well what's trending or what's the trends and right now the way that the fashion industry is purchasing clothes can come from anywhere and everywhere. I mean, you can go to the grocery store and it doesn't even have to be a place like Target. You can go to Kroger or, um, you know, Sprouts even. You can buy hats and tank tops at Sprouts I saw the other day. And so purchasing clothes is kind of in our face abruptly everywhere, which can feel a little bit overwhelming when you have so many options. So when you eliminate that desire to really check the box of fitting in and like what's trending and comparing yourself to what other people are wearing or buying, I can promise you that that will automatically make the art of shopping that much more simplistic. When you just really sit with yourself and, and just really become aware of, okay, what does my day to day look like on a normal basis? Maybe, you know, take it, maybe look at it for a week and including your weekends and things like that. And just really be honest with yourself about, okay, so break it down. Monday mornings, you know, drop the kids off at school. Then I've got a board meeting where I have to give a presentation. I'm going to need something with a bit more pop and an eye color. Then Tuesday, I've got, um, I have a networking event. And so just really become aware with what your, what your average itinerary looks like. 
And then from there, I encourage you, and this is where it's not super fun. So maybe grab a girlfriend if you can maybe trade off weekends doing it or a if you're a guy, maybe find a very nice gal or someone like myself that can help you. Uh, but do a master clean out. I mean, really the easiest way to like get to a good place with your wardrobe is to make sure that everything that's currently in your closet has a purpose. And I completely understand that the concept of size fluctuations I see it. I see it more with my men in shirts because when they build, when they um, are working out and lifting, or maybe not even lifting, if they're fluctuating into more cardio, their bodies change very quickly. Um, and then for women, that that I see it more in the pants department, be, just because we carry our weight at a lower section. And so having those having those pieces that are not maybe at your size right now, the way to get the check mark for them to stay in your closet is make sure they're in good condition. You know, make sure that they are looking fresh. I don't, I like to use the word fresh for our clothing because that means it's, you know, not worn. The clothes aren't starting to pill. There's no stains. There's no holes. It's just, it looks fresh. When you put it on, you feel fresh. Anytime you put clothing on, regardless of you're aware of it or not, it's going to make you feel a certain type of way. And so we want to, of course, feel our best and our brightest and just really, I don't want you to have to be thinking about and just like shifting and arranging your clothes all day and like covering up an awkward stain and trying to, you know, maneuver yourself. So just make sure that anything and everything that gets a thumbs up in your closet looks as fresh as possible. A word I love to use in my clients' closets when I step in them for the first time is, oh, that's looking a little tired. And that usually just means it's gotten a lot of love. You know, maybe you it was your favorite shirt and that's really challenging to let go of. But if it looks tired in the closet, it's certainly going to look tired on your body when you you know, go about your days and it, your wardrobe is an investment. And that's why I think there's a lot of benefit to carving out this time and this space as a gift for yourself is because you want to invest in your wardrobe. So you're not continuously having to replace, 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 and you're not having that massive abundance. So when you allow yourself to have this time with your wardrobe to really sit and acknowledge your, you know, itinerary, then move into the closet department where you start to clean out and you determine what's fresh, what's maybe a little bit tired, what's needing to be replaced. And I encourage you to go with either, you know, your cell phone, if you're an electronics person or get a old school like myself, pen and paper. I'm like, I still love the, just the pen to paper it registers in my brain, but start to make yourself a list of the things that you are getting rid of that were things that you go to all the time. So if there's a really awesome button up or a pair of slacks or a pair of shoes or a dress or something that you're replacing, you know, maybe take a picture of it and then make a note of it on a list. So then when you're going to the stores, you don't walk in just kind of like, Oh, and you're not overtaken by just buying what's on the mannequin or, you know, sometimes sales associates, unfortunately can be trying to hit numbers. So they may be pushing you into certain purchases. And so by having that list that is created after you've assessed your itinerary, after you've assessed your lifestyle, after then you've cleaned out your wardrobe and you really make a list of like where those gaps are then you kind of have a game plan and it's almost like a little bit of a map, a roadmap for you. And a very next level insider tip then, what I do with my clients after this step is I then sit down with this list of gaps. And so, you know, it'll say, okay, we need a great sneaker, like a fashion sneaker, which is very welcomed in a lot of, in a lot of office spaces nowadays, or we may need a great blazer that can be worn with denim because we're not seeing as many suit looks now, or we may need a great date night blouse because 
all your work blouses, you're just kind of putting on a bold lip or, you know, for guys, a funkier shoe and taking that to your date nights. And there's kind of a disconnect. And so I create this master list for them of where the gaps are in their closet, what we need to replace. And then from there, I'm, I make a, an itinerary, if you will, of the stores that we're going to go to to accomplish this. When you walk into a mall and you just are, you know, aimlessly kind of like wandering through and you're like, okay, like I've had some success at Macy's before and there's some great brands there. Like I'm going to step in there. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But shopping is exhausting and it is not the most exciting thing for a lot of people. And so I've found that the more work that you will put in in advance before you enter into the stores, the better. And the more just kind of seamless everything goes, I really try to limit all of my clients and encourage all of you to limit it to four to five stores. Online shopping, I really personally, I'm I am struggling with it because I'm such a tactile person and things do translate differently online as they will when you get them in person. But it has been a huge just benefit in my business because it allows me to shop at 15 stores for clients and get, you know, one dress and top here, one sports coat and sneaker here, rather than going to the physical stores where you get kind of tired after searching the racks and trying things on. So when you do go into the stores, I encourage you to just kind of make a game plan in advance and keep it to maybe four to five stores maximum. If you're doing a department store, I would say maybe take that down to like three stores. Um, you know, just really just be aware of what you can handle because it is fun. It's exciting. I mean, clothes are such an expression of who you are and wherever you are. And, you know, if you, like I was kind of touching on earlier, if you're, you know, in engineering or whatever your field is, whatever your day to day looks like career wise, um, you're there for a reason. You have a purpose. And so your clothing, your suit of armor, if you will, is how you portray that. You know, it's your nonverbal form of communication. And so it makes me so sad when people have such a hard time, but I also completely get it. And it's why I have a job because I love so, I love, I love clothes. I love me some clothes. Um, I always have. But I also, what I love so much about the clothes is not, you know, who wore what or what's trending or what label it is, but it's about partnering that piece of clothing with my client. And it's, it's just like their second skin. It's their second nature. It, they feel comfortable. They feel like themselves. And so by really just taking that time again, I know I'm just like kind of repeating myself, but I'm also seeing some more people <laughs> signing on. Um, it's just step one, acknowledge your, acknowledge your itinerary, acknowledge your work life. Step two, take inventory of your closet, clean it out, make sure everything is fresh. Step three, make a game plan before you go shopping. So that is, that's the most simplistic way to achieve a, oh, and also that is the most simplistic way to achieve like a very strong wardrobe, but set yourself a budget. And if you want to accomplish that budget at one go round and you're like, this is something I want to do for myself, treat myself, knock it out in one go round. I, I will give you guys some numbers just because that is a, a big part of what I work through with my clients because people are always like, what is an actual budget that is accomplish worthy? So to give you some tangible um, real life examples, I just worked with an engineer and it was a female. She does not like clothes at all, just has to wear clothes because she's a human and is a professional. And we spent $3,000 on an entire new wardrobe. I mean, I got rid of, I would say about 80% of her closet we got rid of. And the $3,000 covered, and she's not someone who wanted 
you know, high price tag things. We shopped at Old Navy. We shopped at Gap. We shopped at Macy's and Taylor Loft. Um, and we killed it. I mean, we got dresses. We got, a I think, like four jackets. Um, we she said, I think I created a virtual closet with her of mixing and matching things after the, our process and time together. And she had about 75 looks for, you know, for all the way from her mom time with her kids to her work time to where she's giving presentations and traveling to then her cocktails, weddings, all of that is, was a $3,000 budget. And I will say that's that's about average. Of course, like, you know, if you're wanting something in the more luxury price point of clothing, then you're obviously going to need to amplify that budget. But I've done closet refreshes before where we haven't gotten rid of everything, but we've gotten some really strong, strong just elevation with a $500 budget. And that's something that, you know, we're really there, I'm going to segue us into if you have, you know, just if you're at a place where you're like, you know what, I'm ready to elevate, I'm ready to maybe not completely refresh, because that's I realize that's a big place for to assume everyone's going to be there. But I, if you've got, you know, just if you're ready to kind of implement some new pieces, just really recharge what are those things? And I've created a PDF file for you guys that I'm really excited to share with y'all. And it's for both men and women. Um, I did it with more of the business casual, which is kind of like, what does the word business casual even mean today? Uh, it varies from state to state, from city to city, from company culture to company culture. And so I've based it off of the more kind of more gearing towards the casual side of things because of my profession. That's, that's what I'm seeing more and more nowadays of which I am a, I love getting dressed up. So that does, it hurts my heart a bit to see the suits and the pumps go out of the office space, but it's okay. It's okay. Cause I realize not everyone's like that. So it is very exciting to make a flat fun and to make a sneaker for my guys fun. And so I'm going to share that with y'all after we hop off of this webinar. So you will have examples that you can look at based on this list I'm about to give you. So I'm really excited about that. And they're also, they'll, I've made it so you can directly, it's not just an image, which is really nice. You can click on the image and it'll directly take you to the vendor. So it's, I tried to make it really simple for you guys <laughs> and enjoyable too. It's fun. This is fashion. We're talking, it's Friday. We're talking about clothes. This is exciting. So first things first that every closet, I don't care like what you do, who you work for. It doesn't matter. Every closet should have a pair of jeans that make your booty smile. So say it, I'm going to say it again, a pair of jeans that makes your booty smile. And what does that mean? So when you're shopping for jeans, of course, like check it out, do the squat test, see if they're comfortable. Um, but what's the most important thing is to turn around and see the pocket placement, see where the jeans are hitting you on your pockets. And so if they are a little bit lower and maybe sitting a bit more on the sides and you are a more straight frame, that's okay. But if you are a curvier frame and you do not want to highlight that, then make sure the pockets are more, they're closer together. And so a lot of times people don't even think to like look at the pockets on the back, but that's one of the main ways to make a denim flattering or not flattering is how those pockets are sitting on you. And so that's the first thing. So I you know, I personally like a dark denim, a dark wash. I think it's clean. It goes to a lot of different places. You can dress it up, dress it down. Um, I really like denim also with naked stitching, which means the stitching is has been dyed the same color as the jean because then it really reads like a trouser. What really makes a denim look like a denim aside from 
the fabric is when you have that really almost like a Western style exposed stitching. It's sometimes it's white. Oftentimes it'll be kind of that like gold color. So I personally, when I'm shopping for clients, I love to get them a pair of denim, super ultra dark wash, clean, no lines, no rips with what I call naked stitching. And it's just because not it's not something people really notice. And so, and it really does make a dressy difference. So that's number one. Number two is a fashion sneaker, which is, it's new. It's been kind of on the rise for the last, I don't know, three years. And there's so many different kinds. And when I use the word fashion sneaker or the word fashion before the word sneaker, it's more because I want to eliminate the like the A6, the New Balance, the Nikes, um, all of those brands do make a fashion sneaker, but it's more, they're things that, you know, you could wear with a nice t-shirt and think more of like a flat sole rather than that runners, joggers, athletic sole and different materials. You can get them in suede, you can get them in leathers. And it's just, it's where, it's how we're going to make our closet modern right now. And they're ultra comfortable and they kind of just create a little bit of, it just gives it a little bit of flair for my men. When you have, when you're wanting to be comfortable and you want to put on your sneaker, but yet you put on your sneaker, you would wear it to the gym or you could wear it to the gym. Maybe you're not wearing it, but you could wear it to the gym it just automatically screams ultra casual. So when you have this sneaker that's just as comfortable as your other gym sneakers, but has a little bit of a style flair, it just elevates you in an instant. And so that is definitely number two I would put on my list. Number three is a brilliant t-shirt. And I use the word brilliant because there are hundreds and hundreds of t-shirt styles out there and it's crazy and so be aware of your shoulders and your neckline and this goes for men and women and so men I know you're probably like wait what like there's one style of t-shirt for me to wear but no 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 that is not true my friend so with women, if you open up the necklines, you have ballerina necks, you have v-necks, scoop necks, cowl necks, you have like cap sleeve, short sleeve, three-quarter length sleeves. Know what works for you. Feel You'll know what you feel most comfortable in. Just binge out one day at a store on t-shirts and just try all the different styles on. For my guys, it's the weight. It's more about the weight of a t-shirt for you. And so there are just all different types of fabrics and weights and they do mostly have the same neckline now we're kind of starting to see the mini v-necks and like some crazy scoop v's which i'm not really recommending to any of you guys unless you're like a rocker that's found your way on here um but just you you too need to binge out on a t-shirt day and just really figure out what is your go-to t-shirt because that's something that is produced often the same, like retailers usually don't change the, their t-shirt cuts or their t-shirt fabrics. They may add and refresh, but once you find your t-shirt vendor, you're pretty much going to find yourself loyal to that vendor. And so I've given you guys some great examples at all different price points in the PDF file of that. But when you own a really crisp t-shirt, either in blacks or whites or olives or any color, really, it doesn't have to be a neutral. You can pair that back with countless things. A t-shirt is closet gold. I mean, I've just created you a wonderful outfit with the top three things that I think you need. A pair of dark denim, a really nice, well-fitting t-shirt, and a funky sneaker for guys, if you just get a sports coat, you could go to really, you could go to most places often or most places nowadays. It's, it blows my mind how casual or for women, you add a statement necklace, or if you're not a jewelry person, you add a tactile necklace, like a scarf, a silk scarf or something like that. Or 
you too can add a blazer. And that dressy t-shirt, because it fits you so well, it is going to just speak volumes. You're going to look clean. You're going to look crisp. I used to always have on my like must have list, like a solid white button up. And I do still think, I mean, I still have one and I love it. I couldn't tell you the last time I wore it and I get professionally dressed often. Um, it just, you know, it feels a little bit not dated because it's of course a timeless tried and true, but it doesn't feel modern anymore. A crisp white non see-through, like you have to get the right weight of a t-shirt, which will come when you do your binge out. Um, that definitely has a more modern up-to-date feel. Our culture and our society and world and everything is, we are shifting. I am like holding on here. And with that, a result of it is the wardrobe and like what's acceptable and what feels modern is shifting. And we are just point blank shifting to a more casual place. And so it becomes challenging and why I think a lot of times I work, clients will hire me or offices will bring me in is because when we do go to a more casual environment, people start to look sloppy and there still needs to be, if you're wearing a t-shirt to a nice function, it needs to be a nice t-shirt. And that doesn't, a nice t-shirt doesn't mean a lot of like a hefty price tag. It just means that it, the cut fits you well. It looks fresh, taking you back to that closet clean out vocabulary. So no stains, t-shirts. That's why it's also worth the time to really invest in finding your perfect one because you're probably going to have to replace that the most out of anything else in your closet. And so be mindful of that when you are purchasing high price point ones. There's this brand called James Purse and I want to say they run from like 58 to $78 for a t-shirt and it's worth it if you can afford it because the cuts are beautiful, but you have to replace them just as often as I do my Target t-shirts. And so that makes that price tag a little bit more stressful um, when you know, okay, I'm going to get like 30 to 40 solid wears out of things. And that I kind of want to put a side note on that. People often ask me, like, how often do you refresh or replace things? And that's a really hard question to answer as like a broad statement because it's different from everyone. I mean, how you launder your clothes and how you, you know, if you're dry cleaning them or steaming them versus ironing them, you know, that's always that's going to be a big factor. And so just be aware, just be aware of, you know, how the fabric's hanging, if it's still carrying its shape, if you've got the holes. Um, so that's, that is a, that, surprisingly, that's a question that people, ask. Oops, sorry, I just dropped my phone. If <laughs> people ask often. Um, okay. So the next thing on the list is a date night shirt. So that's not really, doesn't have to do with work, but I know that some people are going to tune into this that may not be in the office every day. So, you know, there's so many jobs nowadays that are remote. And so a date night shirt, I love, 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 love shopping for date night shirts for my clients because here is where you want to have a little bit of fun, not necessarily like revealing or anything like that, but have fun. I encourage you to have fun with like color and print and just something that you normally may not try on. It's that thing in the store that catches your eye, but then you're like, eh, no, 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 no. I could never pull that off. Or that's just, that's too much or over the top. Try it on. Just try it on and see how you feel. Because those are the ones when you, and date night can, if you're married, you still go hopefully on date nights. And if you're dating or if you're single and not dating and just enjoying time, the, the kind of the funnel of my date night shirts and what that means for me is it's something that makes you feel really special when you put it on and you just know I am going to have some good laughs tonight. I am going to have a good time and I feel good and I feel like just beautiful or handsome. And so I call those my date night shirts. And I really do. I think that everyone should have at least one in their closet because 
that could take you to some cocktail events as well. Um, but if you're going to those events, usually there's a lot of like emotions that will be stirring around them, whether it's a work networking event or if it is a, a first date or if it is a first date in a, in three months with your spouse, you know, there's always, there's going to be added emotions to a night out on the town because it's just special. And so you want to have that, that shirt or that dress or that top button up jacket, whatever it is that you've categorized as this is my feel good. This is me. This is me in my fun, relaxed state. And Try your hardest, even though you're going to feel like a rock star in that piece, try to keep it out of the office. There's something about wearing your date night tops and clothing into the office that just kind of taints it. It just kind of gives it that like that work layer and it's just so keep that a sacred piece for your special evening. So next on the list is a lightweight jacket. So whether for you that my my go to my initial what I've been purchasing I'm pretty sure every I could say confidently that every single client I've worked with in the last three years has this in your wardrobe both male or female is a cargo jacket and most of the time it's in shades of olives or navies um, but that's because I just think that they're amazing and brilliant and go with everything. Um, but a lightweight jacket could mean so many different things for you personally. And again, that's taking you back to that beginning of shopping for yourself. Don't follow the trends shop for you. Um, but a lightweight jacket is awesome because travels well, you can throw it in a bag, you can tie it around your waist, throw it over your shoulder, throw it in the hood of the trunk, the main, most important thing is, I hopefully you're picking up on, I'm throwing these things, this jacket, a lot of places hypothetically in my life, but it needs to be kind of like a second layer. So the fabric needs to be very wrinkle resistant. So that is why I like cargos because they're usually made in a heavier, more sturdy fabric that doesn't require often laundering and it's going to withstand a fat, uh, it's not going to wrinkle very easily. So a little trick that I do when I'm shopping is called the wrinkle test. And so what I'll do is I'll just take a fabric like this and I'll crunch it in my hands. And if it, I release it, I hold it for usually like 10 seconds. And then when I release it, if there's wrinkles starting to show after that 10 seconds of just high intensity, like construction or, um, impact, then it's probably going to wrinkle very quickly. And that is the quickest way to look like you really don't care about your outfit or your clothes. And maybe you don't, but if you're watching this and you're still here, I think that you do. <laughs> and so, um, do the wrinkle test, you know, of course, if you're wearing a silk blouse, ladies, it's going to wrinkle. And so just know that. But when you're shopping for you know, travel, especially travel like shirts for guys. There's this brilliant, brilliant company called Mizzen in Maine. And I've put that into the PDF file for y'all and it's wrinkle resistant and it's machine washable and they're button ups for office. You can wear them with suits. You can wear them with jeans. You can wear them with sports coats. Like it's brilliant and it doesn't wrinkle. And for my gals, I mean, for dresses. There's so many types of things that are wrinkle resistant. And so just remember that wrinkle test because you don't want to look like a slob kebab because you're putting in all this effort to feel your best. Um, and so lightweight jacket got a little like off track there, but <laughs> a lightweight jacket is awesome because you can layer your tanks under it. You can layer your sweaters. It's just a really strong go-to and I feel like oftentimes people kind of maybe have put that into like, oh, it's a den. I have a denim jacket, but I never really wear it. Or, you know, I've got a cardigan or for guys, it's like, I've got a sports jacket, like the, um, Columbia and think North faces are really popular, but try to think about adding something to your closet. That's lightweight. It's going to travel very well, whether travel extensive distances or if you're just going to the movie theater with your kids. Um, 
And then also make sure that it's a neutral color with your closet because you want your, you don't want, unless, I mean, I love a good jacket. I could have all the jackets in the world, but you don't want to have like 20 different lightweight jackets or even five different lightweight jackets for that matter. You really want like one solid lightweight jacket that will just mix and match with really genuinely everything in your wardrobe. And that is why I go to more olives and navies because it is kind of the color palette that will reflect most people's wardrobes. Um, another good color of course would be black, but then that's, you know, not as fun to wear year round, although a lot of people do enjoy wearing black year round. So just again, it's about being aware of your closet, what works for you and where you're at with your wardrobe. So lightweight jacket. So next on our list is an evening shoe. Um, you don't want to get invited to an event where you have to go. And this is for men and women. Also, this is a very gender neutral list. Um, where you have to go get a new shoe that then you're going to have to break in at this event. Uh, I really encourage you guys to go out there, purchase a shoe that you can kind of start to do laps around your house in, hang around the house with it, really break that in. And, you know, sometimes that could be a wedge for a gal. It could be a stiletto. It could be there's your, you know what your evening or your, you know, it may not even be necessarily in the evening, but you know what your dressier functions look like. And so be aware of that and invest in a shoe. And I, I do use the word invest there because you do want to get something that's a little bit nicer. If you're going to be dressing up, whether it's for a work function or a social function or a family function, um, it just, it does tend to require a little bit of a more refined, polished look. Not needless to say that you, you know, have to spend like over a hundred dollars or anything like that. But unfortunately, quality merchandise now, because the reason to invest in this is because of the quality. Um, you don't want to have to keep breaking these shoes in <laughs> and you don't want to have to keep replacing them. And so if you find a great one, a big, great pair of shoes, I would say an average of about 100 to 120 um, is about a good place to start. And of course, there's like other way other price points you can jump up to. But when you are getting kind of those like fashion pumps at stores like and and also the fashion um, loafers and things like that for my guys at stores like Target or which Target has great shoes, but I just really encourage that for more casual wear. Um, but when you're doing like targets and H and M's and even top shops and things like that, um, they just tend to break down and not last as long and are not as comfortable. So next on the list, cause I, I'm, I, I could talk about clothes all day, but I want to respect Jill's time and see if there's any questions, um, is a great trouser. And so that doesn't necessarily mean like you're, Oh, I'm going to Ann Taylor loft or I'm going to, um, Brooks brothers and getting a black slack or a Navy slack. Uh, the word trouser can really translate into, you know, for my guys, a sateen like brushed cotton pant that's cut like a denim or it's cut like a chino, but the fabric is a little bit nicer and it will go just about anywhere that anyone in a sports coat's wearing. Um, for my gals, you know, I really love a relaxed trouser, something that you can wear with flats, I think is important with this one. Um, I, I've been having a lot of fun with my clients with a little bit more of a wider leg we got for, I don't know, a decade there into like the micro skinny, like paintbrush down your leg pant. But we're seeing a lot more, especially Ann Taylor Lofts and Club Monaco's and things like that have been doing a lot more generosity through the leg opening. And you can hem them to wear them back to a flat. And I just, I think that you, they can go a lot of places. And it's something that I always like to touch on because people don't really think about buying it because I feel like they were so engraved with that trouser, the black work trouser. And then it's like all the way that 
it's like the pendulum swings and it's like now it's like ultra casual denim and I feel like that middle place that middle ground that really can take you a lot of places a lot of people they kind of dance around it they don't really know what to do with it and so this trouser this is what you do with it <laughs> and so again the pdf file will have like brilliant representations of that because some of you may be going what the heck is she talking about like i may have that i may not have that how do i obtain that so i'll help you guys out a bit and i kind of i'm going to leave the rest of the must-haves to that pdf file i've left you guys a lot of really good comments um and of course you'll have my contact information if you want to reach out with any questions i'd be more than happy but i want to kind of just jump in a little bit more to like some just a couple other things so I know networking and socializing events, one of the tips that I really have when you're getting ready for those events is number one, to feel comfortable. Um, but also, I encourage you to really, for gals, I really encourage you to wear something that highlights your face. So whether that is a statement earring or a statement necklace or a lip color, don't overdo it. Don't go with all three. Um, maybe just pick one. Um, but it's really going to keep people's eyes up on you. And it's also psychologically, it's going to, they're going to remember that. And I have a really hard time. I'm getting better, but I struggle with names, but I remember faces extraordinarily well. And I don't think that that just has to do with my profession. I think that that's just from what the research that I've done and other image consulting studies that I've, you know, read other just business insider. I mean, I'm a research addict and I think that people genuinely, the way that the imagery has impacted our culture and we're just constantly like swiping or looking at advertisements, people aren't reading as much anymore. So the names, we're learning are harder to stick into people's brains. So if you give people a visual cue to remember you, they're going to attach that to you. So when you're shopping for that visual cue and for my guys, it's a little bit trickier, but that's where the shirts really come into play for you guys. Because when you're shopping and you're just getting those banana republic nothing against banana republic there's great things there but when you're just going and everyone's wearing the same thing and everyone's wearing the same blue checks red white and blue checks or light blue navy blue white checks you know stripes whatever everybody starts to look the sea of the same and so when you take that time and you invest in just a shirt with some prints that really reflect and represent you or maybe it's not a print maybe it's a color and it's a color that like is you and this can be something that's a little bit more challenging um i really i recognize that because this is the this is the thing that my clients are most taken back by um because those are normally the shirts that they don't they just kind of like will steer away from. So how to accomplish this without working with someone like myself um, is, which I would love to work with all of you, but, um, and it's possible, but um, become friends with the sales associates. Don't, don't look at them as just like, oh, they're here to sell me things. You can, you can read someone. I, I don't know who's even watching, but I have, a, I have, a belief in my heart that you can read people well to know if this sales associate that's available to you is there to help you and to guide you to a su successful take home shopping experience, or if they're just there to hit their sales numbers. And it's okay to kind of like shop around, if you will, with your sales associates. Um, some of the smaller stores, of course, only don't have many options, but at most department stores, if you're not vibing with someone, it's okay to say, you know what? I'm just gonna look around for a bit and find someone else. But when you start talking to these sales associates, they're around these clothes all the time. They're gonna know where the things are that are the nooks and crannies. They're gonna start to do the work for you. So what you wanna do is you really wanna talk to them about what your goal is and who you are. Like don't just say, oh, I need a new shirt because you know what? They're going to go get you a new shirt that is easy, that's going to make you happy, and it's going to be the shirt. There's, It's their go-to. It's what they give to everyone, and that is not what you want for these networking events or just life in general. 
But remember, we're talking about networking events here and making yourself remembered and known. So what you want to do is just start to tell them about you. Tell them, you know, where do you vacation? Do you vacation? Do you have kids? Like, tell them about, you know, what you love to do. Like, do you love art history? Do you love guns? Whatever. It doesn't have to, what you're talking about with them doesn't have to feel like it's pertaining to, they're not going to bring you a shirt with guns on it. And if they do, like maybe find a new sales associate um, or like call me, but it's going to just start to tell them about you and who you are. So then when they're looking for those colors or those prints, you know, if I had a client that was like, I'm super into hunting and fishing and I love my kids. Okay. I'm obviously going to look for machine washable fabrics for this guy because he's going to be like playing daddy when before and after work. So machine washable is huge. This was me throwing kids up in the air, by the way. <laughs> I just realized that probably looks weird. But um, so he's going to be like in dad mode. But if he when he's recharging and what makes him feel relaxed is hunting and fishing nature, I'm going to go to some of those foresty colors. I'm going to go to those like burnt oranges, those rusts the, you know, tobaccos, the browns, the olives. And then psychologically, he's not even going to know, like I told her I liked guns and she's bringing me this awesome ultra shot, soft machine washable olive green shirt that makes me feel great. Like you may not connect those dots, but that's what working with the sales associates will do for you. So I really encourage you guys to make friends with sales associates. Um, and when you're going to networking events, wear things that represent you something face framing for the gals jewelry lip or if you're not into any of that for my gals take all of that that i just said for the guys in the sense of shirts and do that for you too um next and then i i'm not seeing any questions coming through i hope i'm looking at the right spot for the questions i'm looking at the chat but um of course again you guys can always email me afterwards but then um just peeking at my notes here uh I think just the most important thing I want to leave you guys with, because we're coming up on an hour, which I'm like, how did that even happen? How did I just talk for an hour? <laughs> um, but the most important thing I just want to leave you guys with is feel like yourself. You don't need a closet full of things. I mean, there's so many people that I work with also that have capsule wardrobes where it's like they have a wardrobe of 50 garments and that's all. That's it. Shoes, everything. You don't need high designer. You don't need to invest a ton of money. You, you know, what you do need to invest though is you need to make that decision for yourself. Like I want to feel good about myself, but I don't want to have to stress about it every single day. So I'm going to carve out some dedicated time to really assess my wardrobe and to get to know myself and what I feel good in, what I feel confident in, not where you want to be, not those skinny jeans you want to get in. Where you're at right now is exactly where you should be. I mean, in life in general, but I'm also talking about clothes here. Um, just where you're at physically, where you're at financially, you can feel great in your clothes no matter where that is. And just in the sense of investment, it's more of your time in the beginning and then it's done. And that's the thing that's amazing about your closet is that it's not something that really oftentimes needs to continue nurturing. I usually work with my clients once a year. And after that first go around, we usually do. We spend about four to five days for the process. But then after that, it's once a year and we'll spend half a day in the process. And we're just because the gaps are a lot less and we're just filling those in and refreshing and getting rid of the tired pieces, which a lot of times, a lot of it will be tired because it's just so great and you've worn it a zillion times in the last year. Um, so just really get to know yourself, explore some store options, become friends with sales associates, set yourself a budget, set yourself a goal and get yourself a suit of armor and you will feel great. And it's going to make getting ready for any event on your itinerary that pops up that much more enjoyable because you're not going to have to frantically be like, I have nothing to wear. I don't feel good or everything's dirty. Just eliminate that stress. It's not necessary. It's just not. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun. I didn't, I've never really talked at myself in the screen for this long before. <laughs> um, and again, I love, 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 love what I do. Um, I love the glamour of fashion, but what makes my heart tick is working with clients who at the end of our experience and time together, they feel supported. They feel like the best dressed version of themselves and they go kick booty at whatever they're, what they're called to do and what their job is. Um, so I would love to work with any of you guys. I'd love to answer, simply answer any questions. Um, you'll be getting the PDF by the end of the day. I'm going to make a little adjustments based on just kind of the things that I talked about. Um, mostly about the booty smile thing. I want to make a diagram for you guys. <laughs> um, and so I hope you enjoyed it. And if I, I believe you'll be getting my information. Um, if not, my company is called Art of Style and the website's just artofstyle.com and it's fun. So I look forward to just what's to come next. And, um, if you, again, if you guys have questions over the PDF, please feel free to shoot me an email, shoot me a text, send a, a homing pigeon, whatever you need. I will talk to you guys not soon, but it feels appropriate to say that. So <laughs> bye.